it's weird because it's discipline and freedom. Yeah. You know, to get good at running in the mountains, you have to be disciplined. But there's nothing more freeing than running off trail down a mountain over rocks and logs and being or being on the top of a summit. It's like, can you be any more free? But to get there, you have to have discipline. Yo. This is the Keep Hammering Collective. This is my part of it. And I'm with the one and only Cat Bradley. I'm so pumped you're here. Yeah, what's up, Cam? I'm with the B Rad podcast. My name's Cat Bradley. And today we're co hosting. Yeah, <laughs> a dual podcast. So, who asks the questions? Um, well, I like your idea at first of like keeping it conversational. You know, I, I, I think the key is to, you know, I don't just tell stories. You got to tell stories too. Oh, okay. But your stories are pretty epic. Yeah, true. I mean, you've only heard the ones about the used butt plugs. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was, that was you kind of like this, the flavor of this, that was unique. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one though. I wish I could have seen your face when I told you you were running behind me though. So yeah, but I w by that time I wasn't that surprised. <laughs> <at the story. laughs> good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we had, I mean, just to recap, we'll have a, a whole show on this lift front shoot, but we had just an epic day yesterday. I can't thank you enough for coming to Springfield, Oregon, and just, I guess, you know, it's time. I know your time is valuable, but you gave me a full day and I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that was like the best day ever. We ran this like giant peak. It was really my first summit since hip surgery back in March. And then I also, you know, got to shoot a bow, you know, like legit for the first time. So. Oh, you're so good. So <laughs> freaking good. I have shot bows before, so maybe I had a head start, but, yeah. but never one that was, you know, fit for me right. or that was like not so heavy that, you know, I, it was, it, it was not as much of a struggle or, you know, other than that, I've just shot a kid's bow. So, well, I mean, you took to it like you've done it your whole life because your form, when people watch the lift run shoot show and they see your form at 102 yards, they're going to think that you've done this your whole life because you <laughs> looked so good. Cool. And it, it is really hard to shoot accurate at that distance, especially with a bow that, you know, that arrow's in the air a while. It's not like zipping down there at 300 feet a second. It's up in the, in the air and it's coming in arcing to be perfect at that distance. And that setup is very difficult. And you, you were, I don't know, I shouldn't be surprised, but it was, it was awesome. <laughs> well, I think, you know, honestly, like bad habits is the bane of good technique always. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the time to develop bad habits. So like that is special. <laughs> and you had the herd bull. The herd bull was oh, yeah, teaching I heard, you. Had, thank you, Wayne. <laughs> He's so cool. <laughs> I know. And he, I felt bad because I said, well, we gotta, we're going to go run Diamond Peak real quick. And uh, we should be there by, you know, do you have to leave right at closing time? Normally they close at six. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'll wait. And I thought, okay, it should be about six. So then I think we're coming through Oak Ridge, which is about 45 minutes away at about eight something last night. Yep. Then have a 30 minute Dairy Queen stop. <laughs> we had to get, yeah, we get fueled up because we basically did a big climb on very few calories or hydration <laughs> yeah I was like before we left and I've been running ultras for like 10 years and I I was telling um Carson my husband before this I was like I felt like I was 20 again doing stupid adventures because I showed up in a cotton t-shirt no water no pack and that's kind of my favorite adventures that I've done where I've been completely underprepared I thought we were going we like watched a little bit of one episode to see what it's about mm -hmm. after you texted lift run shoot question mark yeah and I was like, oh, we're just going to run around the neighborhood. So I was yeah. like, no water. Bye, honey. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, it, it was fun to just be totally underprepared and not really know what you're getting into. I, I have not had, you know, the privilege of doing that in a while because, like, the more experience you have, you know, the, the less opportunity for those wild adventures that you yeah. get, you know. So that was fun. Well, you took one water bottle you had <laughs> yeah. tucked in the back of your shorts. <laughs> Yep. And just going for it. Yeah, but, going for it. And we like were sending that downhill pretty hard too. Yeah. Off trail. It was a blast. That was the I think the highlight of yesterday for me. Me too. And what about lifting? How'd the lift go? 
oh, like drinking coffee is an effort now, but <laughs> I'm excited to, to come back in six months and lift more than you. You did great. You did great. It was, we had a lot of fun. Again, I don't want to discredit any of my other guests, but the next ones, you got a high bar to beat. Yeah, and so. if it's beat, I'm just going to come back and, and sleep in your bedroom <laughs> up above this garage. <laughs> yeah, no, let's do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I'll, I'll catch people up who might not know of you. You're, you know, very well-known in the ultra-running community. Um, you won Western States, which is the most famous 100-miler in existence that I know of. I mean, probably one of the longest standing. And it's you the won oldest, actually. The, the oldest. very oldest, yeah. Right. Yeah, so you won that in 2015? 17. 17. Yeah. At 25 years old, that's what it was. I knew there was a five in there somewhere. But you were 25? Four. 24. <laughs> God, I keep screwing all this shit up. I need another coffee. Okay, so one Western States at 24 years old. How amazing is that? Yeah, I mean, I it was a blessing and a curse because I was, like, so young and um, – had so I, I wanted that Western States win so bad. I was teaching and I was like working. I you know I was in the classroom at six forty five in the morning teaching. Also getting my master's in special ed, a career that like I fell into. You know had fun because it was you know got summers off. It was creative, and um, but I wasn't. I like couldn't see myself like a teacher for thirty years, making mm -hmm. like I was making like twenty five thousand a year. You know it was, yeah. it was fucked. Yeah. Um, and then I went to, um, yeah, and I, I, I knew how fit I was and then I won Western and it, you know, that's, then I like from, I got hit by a UPS truck before Western mm. in 2015 and had all these injuries that I was told like, if you don't get them fixed, they're going to catch up to you. And I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah, whatever. And then they did right after I didn't Western. Know, so you won Western after getting hit. Yeah. And I actually almost didn't even start Western States because I was, um, I like, you know, with back injuries and hip injuries, so much of it is nerve pain. Mm -hmm. And when it flares up, not only is it like super painful, it's kind of a mind fuck because like it's searing pain, but you know, logically that you're not doing any damage. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but like the, the other thing is like your legs just don't work mm -hmm. all of a sudden with the, the nerve stuff. So like until I started getting better and, you know, seeing doctors and, to, you know, taking care of myself, I, um, my, the back of my legs were atrophied, mm. you know, like my quads engaging. and glutes. Yeah. Well, because of the nerve pattern, you have to like retrain those nerve mm. patterns after having like a high impact injury like that. And I was literally T-boned by the CPS truck mm. on my bike. And, um, and so, you know, I almost didn't start Western that, that whole week I was like, ah, should I just go for it? You know, mm. I've trained for so hard for so long. And, um, and then I decided to, and it, I just like woke up that day and then it like was the nerve pain was gone. And mm -hmm. it was like, thank God, <laughs> you know? Um, but otherwise like, you know, it's, it's slow going. And I, it, even though it was in 2015, it's been a long time ago winning Western States and then kind of like had some good years, 2018, 2019, but every year it got worse and worse, mm -hmm. you know? And then, then after like the 2019, I've just been, you know, <laughs> trying to put together the pieces. Mm -hmm. And then it was interesting because you said yesterday was the first time you felt that good in a while so long i mean honestly like that good probably since before western like before things started to get really bad um like before western and before like things started to really go downhill i was known to be a, a very good downhill runner for mm -hmm. for a woman you know and um Yesterday was the first time that I felt those things like engage again and felt the it like it was easy to jump over that stuff and yeah. like because it's not only the the like the being stable and it, the pain it's also like your your body doesn't you don't have control when mm -hmm. it, like your nerves your nervous system is what controls your legs and yeah. activates everything when you don't have control of that shit and you're then fucked. I bet then that affects your confidence. Oh my god, because you, no you looked idea. confident yesterday. Yeah. I mean, cause I, I was running behind you, you know, you can't hear out of the one ear. So you like to run in front, which is fine, but you looked confident running, jumping, picking, you know, even though we kind of, you kind of veered to the left too much, but <laughs> <laughs> picking our line is like, you were just like in, in your element, it looked like. Yeah, I was a black. And I think, you know, I got a little taste of that. Um, uh, the other day running in Colorado, just for a little bit, um, Carson was filming me with the camera. 
um, behind me. And I was like, I think, I think this things are changing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then yesterday what it clicked yesterday, I was like, I, I feel You're back. back. Yeah. And I, I have to know how it's going to go because I threw out a rib or something on the way to you or like the few hours or like the day before. And so we like went to go see a chiropractor before <laughs> and I was like, hope it holds up. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, it, did. Um, it did. And everything was better. Um, yeah, it was, it was freaking cool that we got to do that on this epic peak. That's not trafficked often. Um, and it's all on camera. Yeah. Oh, so fun. You guys did. So I can't wait to see the footage. I know. I mean, it's a, you know, and I've explained this before, but I don't do it. I don't do adventures for content, but I do adventures. And if we get something cool, awesome. But yesterday was the best of both worlds because we drug two guys up there with cameras Tanner and Tyler, and they kicked ass to get to the top of that mountain with us. We were all together, and I'm really excited to see the footage. I mean, so I'm like, kind of feel like uh, I sold out myself a little bit because that that's going to be the content's going to be epic. It's just going to be killer. Yeah, it's going to be killer. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's like I always have been super uncomfortable in front of the camera. What? Like, like, no way. <laughs> Serious? You didn't notice? Well, you know, I think part of it is my mom was like a model and like really pushing me into mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, and then I was like, I, you know, it's just you want to do whatever the opposite your parents do. So I was like, no. And, yeah. <laughs> and I think it like came from that. Um, and, and Carson's a photographer and a videographer. And sometimes when he's uh, you know, took out his camera in the past. I've been like, ah, oh, geez, but like Here we go. seeing, seeing yeah. it all and like having those memories, it's totally made me have a different perspective on carrying mm -hmm. a camera in places. And now I love it. You know, now I'm like, I think it's so cool. And I see the, you know, I'm, I'm like a total buffoon and I'm, I don't think about like the artistic value until like I mm -hmm. see it right in front of me. And, you know, so that's cool. And we got, I, we got some good, good stuff yesterday. Well, I also think that, I mean, those adventures and getting cool content and seeing you in your element can inspire. You know what I mean? Cause you're, you're still, you were so young when you won, but you're still very young. And you know, there's people, young runners out there looking at you going, I want that. I want to know what that feels like. Yeah, I hope so. And like, what, like we talked about yesterday is like the thing that the sport needs, especially on the women's side is more young women getting into it and make it deciding like, you know, like I thought for a long time that I was going to pursue the pro track career route. And, but like, you know, I didn't love that. Mm -hmm. I, I really love running. Mm -hmm. I really love the process of training, but like, you know, I, I hope that like, you know, chicks in college right now who are like running, going through the motions of a track career because they see that that's where they can be, you know, have a pro career. See mm -hmm. people like Courtney, especially, um, and hopefully me too. And everyone that's at the top right now, at, um, women's, uh, ultra running or even just mountain running. Like you don't have to run ultras. In fact, like maybe don't, if you're, if you're, yeah. you don't, you know, like to build up to it, but I hope people see women specifically see it and they're like, man, there's another option other than running around circles, you know, or running on pavement. Like, and I, and it also like caters to people who are overall athletes. Like I'm, I'm not, just a, a runner like I like to do a ton of stuff and mm -hmm. like the other stuff that I do um I think helps my running and when I'm a mountain runner to yeah. be a good track runner you like become very very good at running and very bad at everything else <laughs> yeah it's they're pretty specialized you know they run straight yeah <laughs> you know what I mean yeah totally yeah. but you were a track coach no, my dad oh your dad was yeah. your dad was but you didn't you say you coached before for a little bit I coached Courtney from the couch the other day saying that <laughs> maybe her struggling helped her, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not a coach. Yeah. No, I did. My dad coached for many years. Um, okay. but yeah, I never even ran track. Oh, you didn't? No, Same I thing. played baseball. Okay. Nice. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, <laughs> we would, we would make fun of people who ran track because yeah. we were baseball players. Yep. So yeah, the, I didn't get into running until later, but I really now what I love about running is the discipline It's weird because it's discipline and freedom, yeah. you know, to get good at running in the mountains, you have to be disciplined, but there's nothing more freeing than running off trail down a mountain over rocks and logs and being, or being on the top of a summit. It's like 
can you be any more free? But to get there, you have to have discipline. Yeah, totally. And that's the thing. Like the freedom is, yeah, ripping down and like feeling it all click. But also the freedom is in being in a spot that you're like, I don't, I don't know if anyone's been up here in the last 10 yeah. years, you know, like obviously someone at some point, especially here, um, has been there. Uh, but like, you know, not the person sitting next to you at the yeah. office, you no, know, no, there's no way. Not. Um, and that's, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So did hunting or ultra running or did running in general come first? You well, can't ask hunting, me questions. I'm, I told you we're co-hosting here. My part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm flipping it around. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, so you didn't run track. Your dad was a track coach, but you didn't get into hunting until, um, your stepdad took you out. So like, mm -hmm. were you a runner before then? I just ran to get in shape for football. For football. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all I cared about was scoring touchdowns, I guess. And just being, you know, that got most of the attention at school was if you played football. Yep. Yep. And, um, <laughs> so my goal, I was friends with the quarterback, we lived on the same road, small town. So it was like, we lived on Winling road, which is a road the high school is on. And we would just get together every day and I'd run routes and he'd throw the ball. So that was all, that's, that was my running, but we would run this local race in town called the Butte to Butte. It's a 10 K and mm -hmm. it's on the 4th of July every year. We'd run that every year. And if I could, I don't even think back then I could break 40 minutes. I think I would mm -hmm. get like 44 and his dad, Donnie's dad, would break 40. And we'd think he was like just the biggest stud. So breaking <laughs> 40 in the 10K. But yeah, so that's where it started. And then it just kind of evolved from there. And then I still wasn't, because I was such a fuck up drinking and and being, you know, trying to figure out how to be married and all that shit. Um, I didn't even run a marathon until I was, I think, 32 or 34. And then, so for the last 20 years now, that's what I've done. But yeah. I didn't run a marathon until I was older than you. So I'm so curious because like, you know, so much of your brand is like, keep hammering, go, go. But sometimes what I like best about running is like, you know, and you said yesterday that you can't go slow. Sometimes I love just like putzing around like, <laughs> yeah. la, 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 la. Do you like do that at all? Do you like take, you know, and sometimes the running, just like you say that shooting your bow is the time where you're just blank and you can't yeah. think about anything else. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like running's always been for me. However, I'm excited to shoot my bow now because sometimes running is not that. Do you, <laughs> do you like take those opportunities to just like, you know, kind of go slow and be meditative or is yeah. it always just to like hammer? Oh, no, no. I, <laughs> I just, um, I never, I don't wear a watch. So I don't yeah. really, when I say slow s to some people, even my fast would be slow. I mean, I've run yeah. with Centrowitz who won the gold medal and my fastest would be slow to him. So for me, yeah, I run mostly relaxed, but I don't even know what pace it is. I just know in that I did that last man standing and I couldn't run slow enough. It was just like, that was hard. That's such a weird thing that you can run slow up a mountain or run slow. Uh, like we weren't crushing yesterday. No. I mean, we had, we were super conversational the whole time yeah, and it yeah. was fun, but like, it's such a weird, uh, weird thing that you can pace yourself in a 200 mile race, which mm -hmm. like is objectively you, you're, off the gun, slow, yeah. you know, and yeah. then especially like you did Moab, right? That's like pretty flat for a lot of it, mm -hmm. but like a five mile loop for a last man standing. I think it's because there was a, a finish line on every mm -hmm. loop. Yeah. So I always want to get there <clears throat> and then see what happens. And I would just, because I wanted to get there and get it done because you have to get it done to get to the next one. So it was just a weird, <laughs> yeah. I think it's just, that's the format. You got to figure out how to not screw it up. I think those are so hard because there's, you know, you're not just trying to get to one finish line. You're trying to get to as many as you can an unforeseen amount of, and for people who are listening, who don't know these types of races, you're running a loop. In his case, it was five miles in one hour and you don't start, you start on the hour every hour um, until no one's left mm -hmm. until no one can do it anymore. It kind of reminds me of this, workout that I used to do in high school, um, called buses, like mm. the, the bus leaves on the schedule, no matter what, okay. you know, and we do these for four hundreds and like, mm. so if you ran a faster 400, but we weren't yeah. doing them like, <laughs> yeah. you know, we weren't trying to kill each other doing them, you know, so it would have been different. We did it start on the, what did it start on? Track. So, no, but on the minute, it, oh, no, it wouldn't be the 90 minute. Seconds. 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Okay. So we were all running like 75s, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we do a lot like, 
in the t- in the middle of the season, we do like twenty of them, which is like so many four hundred. Oh my god! For, Sounds brutal. Yeah, it was brutal, but like it's just like that. But mm-hmm. you know, we knew there was a, a finish to yeah. that. Yeah, it's just it's a it's a different yeah. That format is getting more popular because it's fun. I mean, but for me, it was just my first one, so I did eleven hours, fifty five miles, and uh, I actually. What, what what got me was there was a Dairy Queen. So it's funny. We had Dairy Queen yesterday, but I had my wife bring me Dairy Queen at, at like one. So this is about maybe five hours or five hours into it. And I ate this blizzard and uh, then took off. And, and I after I ate that ice cream, I couldn't eat anymore. So that's what screwed up my stomach. Yeah, you had like 10 minutes to eat a blizzard. Right. <laughs> and so what, once my stomach got screwed up, I couldn't take in calories. And then, then, then it's the beginning of the end. You know how ultras, you have to take calories in. Yeah. And uh, after a long day when you can't, that's, there's going to be an ending expiration date on your run, basically. And that's what happened to me. Yeah. That's what I tell people that I coach um, uh, for ultras. Like, you know, even if you're puking, like that's not an excuse to stop taking in calories. No. It's just, you know, you, you just have to troubleshoot it. Mm-hmm. Um, because when you stop taking in calories, that that is the end. It's yep. you know the puking isn't necessarily the end. And no, I, and I've had to learn that the hard way. I puke in like pretty much every single race that I do, and not just where once. at. Like what what part of the race usually? Um, it really, it seems to be getting later and later. Um, but I like at Western. I was puking like at mile fifty or something. You mm-hmm. know, and the, like the year you won. Yeah, I've only done Western once. And at UTMB, same thing. I was puking super early. Hmm. Um, and I like on paper had a good day there, except I didn't follow my rule. And mm-hmm. like, I didn't, I didn't take calories. Take, in afterwards. I just, I was like, um, I can't take any more. And what I should have done is just like figured out what works instead, yeah. you know, cause it's, it, that's what's so cool about ultras is like, it's, um, you know, it's just a constant problem solve mm-hmm. problem to solve. Like, and that's the same as like, you know, you, the shooting your bow, you can't, you literally, if you're thinking about other shit when you're Mm -hmm. running ultras or when, especially when you're trying to win them, Mm -hmm. you're not going to do well. Like my, as soon as I leave one aid station, I'm thinking about the next one, like what I'm going to need there. What I, what I know is you have to always be either drinking, eating, or thinking about salt. It seems like, it's like, so you, if you get distracted and you think you're, oh, I'm just in a groove, you're going to fuck up. Because you have to always be thinking about those three things. And that's the other thing you don't, you're, you're, you don't always know exactly what you need. So you mm-hmm. have to experiment like with salt, for example, that's a great thing. Like you don't like, you could be, if your hands are swollen, it could mean you need either more water or more salt, mm-hmm. you know? So you have to be like, okay, I'm going to like chug this bottle of water. I'm either going to puke or get way more swollen or it's going to work and my hands will de-swell. So yeah. like you have to figure out which one you need because your body will tell you but you sometimes have to experiment and like feel worse before you course correct and feel better. Is that to me, that's my big, my first indicator is my fingers start to get my hand and fingers start to get tight. Cause they swell. Dude, my hands get so fat. It's crazy. And that's when, you know, that's when I know I'm usually dehydrated. Yeah. For me, it could, it really could mean like, um, not necessarily dehydrated, but, um, more salt, or Mm. it could mean that I'm taking too much salt and not enough water. I did that. I did, um, a a race last year called crazy mountain. It was the first year they did the hundred and I got, I had my salt so screwed up. I had Mike McKnight there and Ben light. They were both there and my brother. So I had like the all-star crew team, Mm -hmm. right? I should be fucking killing it. But I was taking 50 milligrams of salt and I thought I was used to taking their different pill and I was taking like these chewable things that only had 50. I was used to taking 400. So I was taking so little salt and then I fell behind and then tried to catch up. And my body, I mean, my arms were swollen. Oh, yeah. My, my legs whole- were, it was like, and then I had to, I had to piss like every five minutes, a lot of piss. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, if you don't have salt, um, your, your body like can't process the water. So you're pissing clear, you know, and you're Mm -hmm. like, and that's the mistake that new ultra runners make is they're like, Oh, I'm hydrated. I'm pissing clear. I'm in the, in the, I'm like doing everything right. But that's like not the case. Then I knew something was up because I was just peeing too much. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this isn't, something's (laughs) fucked up. Yeah. It was a leaky. I fin I finished, but it was 
hard. Brutal. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard. Well, and that's the thing too, when your hydration is mixed, messed up, your, you know, your legs get way, like way more sore. you you got to think of your muscles as like a sponge. And if they don't have water in them, they're not going to take that impact. Well, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're just going to oh, be like a dry sponge and it's going to hurt way more. So mm-hmm. like, I always tell people if you're really hurting at like mile 20, you're not supposed to be hurting that bad at mile 20. Like 20 miles is tiring and hard for anyone, but your legs shouldn't feel like jarred. Mm -hmm. Um, That means likely that you are dehydrated or have an electrolyte imbalance. And like, again, it's just like troubleshooting, you know, but either way, if your legs feel like that in mile 20 and you're Mm well-trained, then like you're, it's hydration always. Right. Hmm. Um, So I'm curious with you winning at 24, and having to overcome all the things you did after getting hit, being a teacher, um, starting early, fitting training around with this, and now you focus on this full time. It's like how how good does that feel, or where where do you think like your ceiling is? Yeah, you know what's funny is like I'm not really quite full time right now because I I coach. You know, I coach 35 athletes right now. I fucking love coaching. Um, I also do a lot of brand work. I work for Method Seven, a sunglass company. Um, I, I have like a pro contract where I get paid, but, um, I, I want to get to the point where I can like just coach like 10 athletes maybe. And, and just because I love it, that, Mm -hmm. that gives me, you know, you got to think about the thing, the balance of like what gives you energy and what drains it. Like that's something that gives me energy. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, if I was truly running full time, um, and could like spend the extra 10 minutes, you know, rolling out my calf when, Mm -hmm. instead of just like at night before bed, you know, that's, that's the big difference. And I'm trying to get there. And like a big part of what we're talking about is like, um, you, you need, you know, and I have really amazing sponsors right now that I love. Um, but I've been injured for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so my, I I know I've been performing at like half mass, like Mm -hmm. literally like, or showing up, like literally half of my body is not working. And now it finally is. Um, and I think the next key is that is like taking some of the things off my plate and, you know, that's either going to take someone really believing in me and not saying my sponsors don't believe in me. They totally do here again. Like I've been injured for four years, (laughs) like just putting together the pieces. Um, but you know, giving me the, the resources so I can take on less work or it's going to mean like, you know, Carson and I really, really tighten our belt for Mm -hmm. like, you know, a, a year and me not work uh, so much so mm-hmm. I can just solely, and we're kind of getting to that point where yeah. I'm like, I am, you know, I'm working with all these amazing people, like the strength coach that I was talking about, he's giving me a discount, but it still costs money, you know, yeah. and he's awesome. And all the body work and shit, like, especially with the traumatic injuries, like I need that stuff to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And then I also need to recover, you know, <laughs> when I'm like working full time, trying to spend time with family. And like, that's something that I'm not willing to sacrifice is like quality time. Mm-hmm with my husband. Um, but like I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice some other stuff and like the, the recovery piece is everything. And you, you know, I have a good friend that ran with Emma Coburn college, your friend. And she's like, Emma is like obviously so talented, but I think what, what really sets her apart is she knows how to recover. Right. You know, that 1%, there's so many talented people out there. Mm-hmm. And that 1% is like the people who are able to be like, I'm going to freaking sit on this couch for a couple of hours yeah. after my workout. And that, that's something that's really hard for me to do too. Um, but I think that's, that's going to be the difference. And you just see people now in ultra running. I, it's been there on the med side for a while, but in the women's side, it's finally getting there where women can do this full time. Yeah. And, um, I honestly do think that's what it's going to take for me. And I, you know, I, I never want to talk about the ceiling for me, um, or for anyone, because I, I, you know, I believe in, and Courtney's proved this, like the limit does not exist. And like, you know, I also want to like go through all of it for the right reasons and like love every, every part of it, even the suffering, because mm-hmm. that's, you know, I do, I'm sick, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. and, um, I want to really, I don't want to like think about the, the races I'm going to win, but I want to get the best out of myself. Yeah. And I, you know, like, I know I'm like not even close to mm-hmm. where the best, where I am the best, you know, here I am, I'm working like on the computer at least 40 hours a week. Um, still like happy, loving it. I'm, yeah. you know, 17 weeks, um, out of this hip thing. Um, 
and I'm, I'm running really well already while working and traveling a lot. Um, and I'm still like feeling so good. So Mm -hmm. like every single day, I just want to focus on getting the most out of myself. And sometimes that's going to mean like training really hard and Mm -hmm. resting really hard, but like, yeah, that's what I want to see. I think, yeah, you mentioned Emma, she, she would, when I was working full time, I would, you know, get a few hours of sleep a night, train a lot of miles the next day and sort of say like joking a little bit, but you know, guys are, I'd say rest days are for pussies. It's like, (laughs) I said it on Rogan, it's kind of, let's kind of fucking around, but she would always talk about, she needs her sleep. She's like, (laughs) would question, you know, cause I'd run maybe on a few hours, but I think, so your point and her example in, I would, I would wager that Courtney knows this too, is like that sleep and that maybe not, maybe rest. Yes. But also sleep is so important. And to me, when I think of you and your life, you describe, it's like, even if you're not actually on the computer, you're thinking about shit. You know oh what my I mean? God. And so when, can you really rest and get to sleep and rest you need when you're distracted by all these hundred different things you got to keep track of? No. And I, and like, I, and maybe because I always have so much going on in my head, like I, it, I don't sleep deeply, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that is a huge part of it. And so, you know, and like, it's taking those steps and making those sacrifices. And like one thing that we just did, I've always bought shitty mattresses and Carson and I just balled out on a a mattress. Like Mm -hmm. we made the commitment and, you know, and that's really cool about having a partner that's like, you know, I'm here for your dream dreams Mm -hmm. and I'm here for his. And like, um, but we're like, you know, sleep is everything in this sleep isn't something that I I haven't conquered. You know, you see it as something you can conquer. I'm a shitty sleeper. I'm Mm -hmm. like, you know, okay, I'm going to read my book for like four hours before bed to shut my brain off, you know? And, um, you know, so it is making those sacrifices and it is like, you know, the, when you're working a lot, um, your nervous system is always like, on, you know, mm-hmm. it's always taxed and it is like those little things. And I read this, um, book once I forget about running. Um, and I hardly ever read running books. I think it was called Bravey. Yep. Yeah, Bravey by, uh, Alexi Pappas. And she's, she talks about, um, willpower being a finite source, Mm. you know, you only have so much willpower and you can like build your stores of willpower. You like, it can be trained like anything else. You can increase it by doing hard things. But at the end of the day, when you line up for a race, you only have a a finite source of willpower and you got to make sure those batteries are charged before. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, in the last couple of years, especially like with this injury, I haven't been getting the contracts that'll that and like totally on me, not the brands. Like, I will not be getting the contracts that will, you know, allow me to not work. And so I'm like, you know, the last race that I did or like two races ago, but the last one too, I was like, the race had a 6 p.m. start. I'm working till four when Mm -hmm. we leave, you know? And so I get to the start line and and it's not just working. It's like scrambling to get everything done because Mm -hmm. of like travel. And then my willpower is like, okay, even if it's like I'm on the couch all day, it's still like maybe a quarter drained Mm -hmm. then like, then I can't tap into that hundred percent. And like, I'm really tough. I know that, but I definitely also know that how taxing that is on me because I've like come with a rested body, come to a start line with a rested body, but it tapped out like, you know, willpower battery and Mm -hmm. like just not had, even though I've like tried to push, I haven't had that extra oomph, you know, Mm -hmm. to get me there. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. It's just like, you can only, you can only dedicate yourself 100% to so many things and ultra running. Geez, I don't even know. You're just pushing your body as hard as it can actually probably pass where it normally would any normal human would push. So to do that also being with your willpower being tested, that's, I mean, it's too much to ask, but what, what I envision like for you, what I, a perfect world would be, yeah, you could cut back some of this, you could get more rest. And then these sponsors who you said have been, they've stood by you with all the surgeries in the years. Mm -hmm. I want those sponsors to be like, what do we got to do to keep this girl? You know what I mean? She is kicking so much ass. And this is like, I feel like all this, you overcame so much and still won Western. What if you had everything focused and you were healthy and you were resting and you were like just more um, in tune with these goals. And then these sponsors, you'd get those contracts, you know, because they'd be like, holy shit, she's, and you're only 30. And so, I'm like really trying to get back there and I'm, I'm trying to, 
um, like cause something that Carson and I are doing are we're like stripping down all our excess right mm-hmm. now. And, and that's something that we talked about because both he and I, we like love adventure. We, we can't plan for shit because we're like, what if we plan something? And then yeah. our, the, the next opportunity we can't seize. Um, and like even, you know, planning for his 30th with the, which is July 29th. Like we, we are, you know, we're like, okay, this was hard to plan, you know, because we, we didn't know where we were going to be and we didn't want to say no to anything. Mm -hmm. It's finally planned. Um, (laughs) (laughs) but like, and that's, and that's the key is I, and I want that. I Mm -hmm. want to be able to just focus on running and like, you know, still have the other little pieces that are, are there. Um, but I, I, I want to, to, you know, I had a super hard call with my agent last year, you know, and this is before I got the, and part of it was like making the commitment to getting the hip fixed. But, Mm -hmm. um, he called me up and I, Tyler, my agent, like he's so awesome. And he, I, I was his first athlete. So like, he can be super real with me and Mm -hmm. his business has kind of blown up since. And he called me and he was like, Kat, this is, if you blow this right now, you're not getting back. You know, this is, you're, you're going to tarnish your reputation with brands. And Mm -hmm. it was just because I was taking on too much and I wasn't, you know, I had this opportunity to run as a professional athlete, but because of all the injuries and all the stuff, I wasn't taking it as seriously. Mm -hmm. And that was a wake up call, you know, and it's been a year since that conversation. And every, every day I've been taking those steps to, um, to make sure that I I don't lose this and that not only that, but I seize it. Yeah. And, you know, I got to, again, you know, huge props to my husband for pushing me to get my hip fixed because I was, you know, you're like one more race. I'm just going to do one more. And he was like, you know, I did this race in New Zealand um, a week before our wedding and like who I fainted in mile 85. I saw, um, uh, third place. And I was like popping Advil like crazy mm-hmm. like because of my hip. It was in so much pain. Yeah. And like, who knows where I, why I fainted. There's, you know, the big question mark there. It could have been hyponeutremia. It could have just been like, I was in a shit little pain, mm-hmm. you know, it could have been stress. Yeah. Um, and you know, after that he was like, I'm done. He was like, I'm done watching you do this to yourself. And I honestly, I don't know if I would have taken that, mm. you know, it's hard to like be able to, I was able to run. I was able to go out and run still, but I, it didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, being, making the choice to be like, okay, I'm going to be on crutches for six weeks. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm healthy today and I'm making the choice to not be able to walk. And not only that, but like to need help sitting on the toilet to, we put a freaking cooler in the shower so I could shower. Like just Carson was like, here's something that you can sit on. And I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and and I wouldn't have done that, but I'm so grateful I did because of the day like yesterday. And also it makes you appreciate, you know, that I am able to do that at, yeah. you know, at any point and that I am healthy, healthy and able bodied. And there's like so many people who aren't, um, who look at me complaining about just this little hip thing that I could like live with fine yeah. without surgery. But, um, he's, you know, so that like, and that's just like shows sometimes like we are our own worst enemy. Like yeah. that was total, totally idiotic. I was told I needed this two years ago mm. by like several people. One guy, one doctor was like, you maybe could get away with PT. Maybe and I was like, PT. <laughs> Focus on that. Yeah. It's just what you wanted to hear. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> yeah. I think that <clears throat> I do think that it is a balancing act with just knowing you how I do now. It's like, because hearing the stories about you did the Appalachian Trail when you're 19, it feels like um, you still, the structure is good for some people. I feel like you you need structure, but also freedom. You totally. Know? And it's like, with all those other commitments, it har- it's hard to have both because you're, you're giving up. You're either giving up freedom or you're giving up structure, or you're giving up rest. So it was like with your personality, you have to, yeah, here's my structure I'm following, but I need to be able to whatever, chase the wind some days. Yeah. And you know what is going right now is rest. Mm-hmm. Like I average maybe five hours of sleep, you know, right. maybe run like training. Yeah. You know, they'll say you need nine for, for giving the miles or what you're asking of your body is like eight or nine, nine plus naps, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I, and that is, that's what's going is the rest because like everything else, I, 
I'm such like a opportunist. I, I, and I, 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 I don't want to give that up. Like that's right. something that I love about myself. And I think you can probably relate. Mm-hmm. I just got to seize everything. We got to do all the adventures. We got to. Yeah. Like, Missing out. That's why I hate sleeping because of that. I mean, I actually, when I'm sleeping, I'm like, I could be doing something. I know. I know. It's, it's nobody talks about cool shit that happened when they're asleep. Yeah. But I, when you're doing stuff that, so that's where I have, I struggle. I feel like I'm wasting time, but so it's like changing that mindset. It's like, no, this is, this is helping me do everything else I want to do. Yeah. But it's, it's hard. It's hard. And then, you know, it all, it, it does catch up to you. Like mm-hmm. I'll be fine for like two weeks. I'm not a lot of sleep and then have a full blown mental breakdown, you know, yeah. which is like, not me. I'm pretty even keeled. And all of a sudden I'll like, you know, be like, I need to quit, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, um, the Carson will be like, you just need a nap. <laughs> like, that's please all. like please yeah being crazy yeah. <laughs> and then i'll wake up and i'll be totally fine you know um but it's hard and, and it's really hard to it, it takes time to consciously make those life changes and steps you know again a big part of it is like again we um just moved back to hawaii and we're going to be traveling in the mainland and stuff but we were had a place in colorado and a place in um Hawaii where we grew up and like going back and forth and renting back and forth and then Mm -hmm. having to also travel for work all the time or running is like so managing tenants that's like oh man that is crazy there's like one time my last tenant um there 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 there's like a bunch of coke on the table when we moved out and I'm like "Um," and you still couldn't pay rent on time yeah (laughs) like that's usually how it works and I was like what (laughs) yeah probably a long history of not making good decisions Mm -hmm. for that person. (laughs) Yep. And then when I'd ask for rent and called me snappy and then, and then talk to Carson and be like, why can't you be more like that nice guy? I'm like, "Ah." (laughs) I understand. Yeah. So that's, that's draining your willpower for other stuff, right? Oh my God. So much. And it showed like that, that was a year ago. And like, now we're making these decisions to like strip down and already just like, having, knowing that I have a spot to return to no matter what, that's like, you know, Mm -hmm. that was so much stress. And I was a nomad for a long time, like lived in my car for a long time. Yeah, I had a place, but I was, I'd like Airbnb my spot where, when I was like in Europe racing and, you know, and, and I, I like could never stay still, you know, I like, I didn't live in a consistent like spot growing up either. Mm -hmm. I was always moving around. And I think like this year I was like, God damn it. I need to nest. And I realized that was part of like my, it was so draining on my willpower. Yeah. And like when I won Western, like because I was teaching and because I had the schedule, like I just showed up, I didn't have to think about it yeah. and leave. Even though I was like broke all the time, I was all in. I was like almost more all in on mm-hmm. running than That's I am stru- now. There was structure. There was structure. And like, you know, I still had weekends. I still had like a mm-hmm. summer, but now it's like, I, it's like, you know, it's putting out fires all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. sure you can relate. Like now you. you yeah. <clears throat> it's, I do notice when, cause I quit work in October, but when I had to get to work, I used to have to fit everything around that. So I would be like, oh, I got to get up early and get my run in before work. And then now that I don't have like a work day, sometimes I don't run until five at night. I was yeah. like, what the hell did I do all day? I, know. I, I got more done when I had a job. Totally. But yeah, so it's hard. That structure is a blessing and a curse. Um, it's a curse because you don't get the rest, but you have that structure to build whatever you're, you're training around. Yeah. And like sometimes I think the beauty is like, you know, I what helps is like I can, I meet with my strength coach at 5 Mm a.m., you know, and then I get my workout in. And then, you know, right now I, you know, then I start meetings and shit at 10 Mm a.m. And um, having that is great. And I don't want to lose that when I am working a little bit less, you know, and, um, and like, you know, I can still do that run at five. And I think it's good for, for me personally to do my stuff in the morning. Like I'm more motivated. My day is better. Um, and then, and then like, imagine like I've finished at 10, I can like 
eat so so much food like <laughs> yeah. which is like half of it when i'm in meetings and stuff i'm like shit i'm in meetings 10 to 2 <laughs> i just ran 12 miles and lifted you know and, yeah. um, and you like need a bunch of calories well you have a bow now you need to go kill pigs oh yeah and that's gonna fuel you we're gonna we're talking about going and run it you know the bow that that i got is um what's it called the bow that i got you didn't even tell me well, it's a keep hammering version of the, do you know what it's called, Tanner? No. Uh, it's not the Torex. Where is that? Where is that bow? Um, oh, it's right over there. Yeah, because I, I need to, that's how I end this podcast. By, oh, it's talking about the bow. By handing oh, you the bow. Oh, we're like about that I know, time. <laughs> I know. It's been going so fast. Yeah. Can, can you come over here, Carson? Yeah, thank you. Let me look at this one, right? Yeah, so thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, what, oh, it's a cobalt. Cobalt. Yeah, cobalt. So this is this is going to be, and I say pig, I mean wild boar. Yeah, wild so boar. So people who don't, maybe they think you're going to go kill a pig in a farm or what. No, these are wild animals. Who are wild, super wild dangerous. Boar. Yeah, they have big tusks. Big tusks. In Hawaii, when I was growing up, I used to be, I used to like run in the woods and I used to be afraid of the pigs more than I'm afraid of the cougars here. And I've seen cougars in uh, mountain lion in Colorado and in Mexico, like, you know, Mexico at mile 75, you know, it was, it was burly. And then in, um, in Colorado a lot. And I'm, I was more afraid of the pigs growing up because they're kind of wild cards. You know, yeah, you don't know. Definitely. But anyway, we were talking, I was kind of bummed at first because I couldn't, um, pull back the heavier bow and mm -hmm. it was like a little heavy for me to carry just hold but this one is light enough now i'm pulling it back he way heavier and i can um run with it i yeah. can go there's this super awesome spot that you can only get to by trail or boat but even boat like not i've, I've never seen a boat there and we're gonna run in with this bow and um and you know spend a little time and and just it's killing pigs God, <laughs> it's I gonna be so fun i can't wait to see the results of that this is i mean it's been so fun and then just seeing your eyes light up when you shoot a bow and talk about this hunt and talk about running in and doing this it's like uh i know it's gonna be very special yeah it is it's gonna be really i can't wait to you know it's one thing to shoot a bow which i've done and then another thing to like have one that's sighted in for you and then to all these plans that i've been making um with Carson and um, my brother-in-law Alex we we like are, are suddenly possible <laughs> you know yeah. we've made these plans we've been excited Talked but they're like so pipe much. dreams yeah. now um now it's possible now it's getting real and you know I mean the the time where you're going to be in bow range of a pig and you pull back and you do all the checks and balance that we just did out there because that's all going to be second nature because you're going to be going through these reps mm -hmm. over and over and over so in that pin settles on that pig and that arrow buries it's going to be sweet and it's like people who don't hunt might make wonder that might sound a little weird but you know as a hunter we need to kill to survive as a as a human you kill to survive you might not be doing the killing yourself you might be paying somebody to kill for you but you're still killing but as a hunter where you're doing it yourself and you're like yeah this is uncomfortable this is maybe what not everybody would enjoy, but this serves a purpose. And it doesn't feel good. Like I'm a, you know, no one would ever know this, but I'm pretty sensitive. Like killing mm -hmm. stuff does not make me feel good. And I, you know, I've posted photos of hunting before and I've gotten all kinds of nasty comments about how can you do that? And like, but like, it doesn't ever feel good. I'm, you know, I saw those fawns yesterday and like the, oh. the my like women instincts like go, Ah, well, no, I, babies, yeah, you know. I slammed on the brakes. I don't want to kill I know. anything. It's, it's so scary, but like, you know, you gotta, you know, when you pick up meat in the grocery store and I eat meat, I've, I've tried to go vegetarian just be environmentally, um, because conscious, I know, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, environmentally conscious. And I also, I run by factory farms and I like want to vomit. It's mm -hmm. so messed up. Um, and like, but like, where's the last time you thought about where your, your beef came from, you know? And that like, that's like. The, it's the same like little stain on my conscious, like that same like guilt mm -hmm. and like, you know, pigs in Hawaii, they are 
they are messing things up. They you know, need, to be, they need yeah. to be killed. Literally to the point where the government is taking helicopters and gunning them down with machine guns, you know, yeah. just because they're like, we don't know what to do. These are such a big problem. Yeah. They're so invasive. Like, to get food, save money in Hawaii, which food is so expensive. A box of checks is $8, you know, and then, um, and then like feed us for a while mm -hmm. and like do something good for the, our, our home mm -hmm. that we feel super passionately about. Like that's, that's like a, a dream. It's powerful. Yeah. It's power to be, being a hunter. Yeah. It's not always comfortable, but it's, it's necessary. Yeah. And it's like, it gives you know, ownership. Like I provided this, I killed this. Now I'm eating it and it's helping me sustain life. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, you can say like, cause it kind of lets you off the hook. Some people, if they don't think about it, they're buying a steak at the store. They're not, they don't want to connect the dots because it doesn't feel good. And, but even though it doesn't feel good to hunt and to kill an animal, to actually kill, it feels good to say, yeah, I did this and this is what it takes to live. And it's like, uh, it's empowering. It's not always comfortable, but it's very empowering. And I'm, I'm pumped that you're going to be doing it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, thank you, Kat, <laughs> again. I mean, I had the, I've had the best time. Uh, it's been so fun. Thank you for coming, and I can't wait to do it again. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank we you. close this out. Keep hammering.